So the JWST calibration pipeline is organized into three stages. For stages two and three, there are multiple pipelines, each of which is only applied to data of a specific observational type. For example, imaging versus spectroscopic versus TSO data. However, data of all types must first go through the stage one pipeline, which we also call detector one. The detector one pipeline applies both detector level corrections, as you may assume, and also converts the input ramps to corrected slope images. A slope image is defined as a 2D image of units counts per second. On this slide and many slides going forward, you'll see two links at the bottom. Uh, one will take you to JDOCS, uh, which is a more high level qualitative overview. And the other will take you to read the docs, which is more detailed, but also more technical. OK, so the Detector 1 pipeline takes as input a single uncalibrated raw exposure. These are called uncal files, and they have units of DN. As output, you'll receive two products. One of these is the write file, which is a single uncalibrated slope image, and it's in units of DN per second. This has been averaged over all integrations. The other is the rate ints file, which is a data cube where you get a slope image for each integration. Again, those slope images are in units of DN per second. Here's an example of how you may import the pipeline in Python. The pipeline is a whole, which will perform all necessary steps. Or you can import a single step at a time. And here's an example of how you might do that for the saturation step. There are three ways you can run the pipeline. Two of them are in Python, the run and call methods, and the other is a command line method. Um, there's extensive details and examples of how to use each of these methods in not only this webinar, but the previous imaging webinar notebooks. So before we start talking about some of the steps in detail, let's make sure we all are aware of what up the ramp sampling is. So all web detectors use up the ramp readout, also called multi acume mode. In multi acume mode, every pixel is non-destructively sampled several times during an integration, which means you read out the information in a pixel and continue to accumulate signal. An integration is specified by the number of groups between detector resets, and each group itself contains multiple frames that are co-added. Here's an example of what this might look like on your ramp. You continue to accumulate signal, reset, and begin a new integration. This is a, a workflow of how the Detector 1 pipeline um, proceeds depending on mode and instrument. Each of the columns corresponds to a particular mode or instrument, and the check mark shows which step is applied for that mode. Some steps are applied based on wavelength regime of the data, and some are applied across the board. For instance, this one pointed out here, jump detection. So now I'll start talking about a few of these um, steps in detail, starting with the saturation step. So every detector has its own saturation threshold, and any groups with values above that threshold are flagged and therefore not used in subsequent ramp slope fitting. Here's an example of this, where every circle here corresponds to a group. After you pass the saturation threshold, groups are flagged, and they do not uh, contribute to the calculation of this slope here. Um, all web detectors have reference pixels at their edges. These are pixels that aren't sensitive to light, but are read out using the same amplifiers as normal pixels. So the reference pixel correction step of the pipeline uses the average value of these reference pixels to correct amplifier dependent offsets in each group and one over F noise. Linearity correction. So IR detectors become nonlinear as the signal increases, but then this nonlinearity is well characterized by some of low order polynomials. Um, and here's two figures illustrating this effect. On the left, this is from WIFC3 IR, and on the right is a simulated near cam data set. Um, the, the plot in, in black shows the uncorrected ramp in both cases, and in red, the corrected. Uh, the JBC pipeline will also identify any large jumps in the signal between two groups. Uh, these are often caused by cosmic ray incidents. Once these jumps are identified, slopes are fitted to the ramps before and after the jump and then averaged together. 
Again, here's an example from a NearCAM data set on the right here. A jump has been identified in this group in red. Therefore, the pipeline will calculate the slope before the jump, after the jump, average those two slopes together, and that's shown here in blue. Finally, we have the slope fitting step. So the slope of each ramp is calculated using a weighted linear least square fit, where the weight is based on the read noise and the photon noise. So the mean count rate is calculated for each pixel for each integration to create a slope image for each integration. This is an example of a slope image for NearCam. We also average across all integrations to create one single count rate image. Along the way, we keep track of all the uncertainty terms, including the total, the read noise, and the photon noise terms.